Good afternoon. My name is Anna Tomaszewska. I'm a PhD student supervised by Billy Wu and Greg Offer, and I work on a lithium-ion battery fast charging project sponsored by Shell. Today I'll be talking about some of the key findings of a review on battery fast charging we published last year, the knowledge gaps we identified, uh, and some of the work we've done to address one of these gaps, namely fast charging and different thermal conditions. Last year, we worked together with Shell and our colleagues at Shinway University to review the existing literature on fast charging and identify the questions that still remain unanswered. The topics around fast charging span a whole range of scientific disciplines and length scales. At the atomic scale, fast charging requires sufficiently fast charge transfer kinetics and diffusion in both solid and electrolyte phases. These processes in turn affect which reactions take place and at what rate. In addition to the lithium intercalation that we'd like to promote, we may be getting side reactions such as the growth of the solid electrolyte interface layer or lithium plating in the graphite, which tends to be a problem at higher charging rates or lower temperatures. These side reactions then translate into capacity fade and resistance rise at the cell and pack level. At this length scale, we also experience certain thermal gradients or cell to cell imbalances that can affect performance. Finally, at the system level, we need to consider aspects such as the thermal management of the pack, safety measures, but also variables such as the user habits. So, for example, how often is fast charging actually needed for an electric vehicle? Or environmental conditions such as ambient temperature. We identified a few key limitations or gaps that are still preventing us from charging lithium-ion batteries as fast as we would like. First of all, we found that while there are many promising approaches to improving battery materials, these solutions generally take a long time to be commercialized. There are, however, solutions that can be implemented on much shorter timescales, and these generally include engineering strategies such as current profile optimization or appropriate thermal management. Fast charging induces a few degradation mechanisms, most notably lithium plating and particle cracking, and unfortunately, we still don't have any reliable methods to detect these onboard electric vehicles. This is one of the reasons why we often have to charge batteries at a more conservative rate than they could theoretically accept. We also found that while there is a lot of literature available on various aspects of fast charging, much of it is very specific to certain cell types or environmental conditions. For example, the charging optimization studies are very often performed on only one cell, usually at room temperature, and this does not tell us much about how a different cell may respond in a different climate. A related knowledge gap is that the effects of heat generation during charging are often neglected in many studies. There is even less literature on how thermal gradients, which are almost always present in real cells and packs, would affect fast charging performance. Finally, the vast majority of research is still done on electrode or cell level, and the links to the performance at pack level are unfortunately still poorly understood. One of the gaps that we chose to address in our work is the one around the effects of ambient temperature and temperature evolution on different cells. The fact that temperature very strongly affects battery behaviour is already well known. In the case of fast charging, we generally aim to reduce the degradation by minimizing the rates of two main side reactions that take place on the graphite anode. That is the growth of the passivating SCI layer, which is accelerated at high temperatures, and lithium plating, which is favored at low temperatures and high char and charging currents. Lithium plating is particularly undesirable because when it does happen, it tends to be much faster than SCI growth and can potentially lead to internal short circuits, or at least rapid capacity fade. What is often neglected is that these two mechanisms can be more or less severe depending on the cell design. For instance, the electrodes of the high power cells are usually quite thin, which facilitates the transport of lithium across them and more uniform intercalation. High energy cells, which are more often seen in electric vehicles, use thick electrodes to maximize energy density, but unfortunately the trade-off is impeded transport and higher risk of lithium plating. Because SCI layer growth and plating are favored by different thermal conditions, 
every cell has an optimal temperature for a given charging rate. The temperature tends to be higher for energy cells and also at faster charging rates because of the higher risk of plating. As illustrated in this modeling study by Yang et al, a battery electric vehicle cell will have a higher optimal temperature than a plug-in hybrid cell. And the faster we want to charge it, the further we ship the optimal point towards higher temperatures. There is still quite a limited amount of literature on the topic of how the ambient temperature and temperature evolution during charging influence the effectiveness of different fast charging strategies. We chose to use an electrochemical thermal model to address this gap. As a case study, we investigated one of the successful charging protocols from the literature, the so-called universal voltage protocol proposed by Gu et al. UVP was specifically developed to reduce heat generation by using low currents at the start and end of the charging process, where the heat generation rates, and rates tend to be higher, and applying a much higher current in between. Compared to the standard charging method, constant current, constant voltage, or CCCV, UVP was demonstrated to achieve an over threefold improvement in the lifetime, which is of course very impressive. The limitation is that this performance was observed with one specific cell at room temperature. So the question we asked ourselves was whether similar benefits could be achieved with the same protocol for a cell more relevant to electric vehicles and with different thermal conditions. We approached this question with a physics-based and thermally coupled model. Such models are typically quite computationally intensive, but because they are based on mass and charge conservation laws, they are more accurate and provide more physical insight compared to other types of models. The model we used considers two key reactions, there is the intercalation and the undesirable lithium plating, but it can be extended to include other mechanisms. The results I'll be presenting today are based on a 1D model. We do also have the capability to apply it in two or three dimensions, which is important especially for larger format cells and is part of our ongoing work. Using a model, we applied the standard charging protocol to CCCV uh, and the UVP to a high energy lithium ion cell. We also varied the ambient temperature from room temperature of 25 degrees down to negative 10, which is relevant uh, for many colder climates. Both protocols take the same time to charge the cell. The top two plots show the temperature evolution on the left and the amount of lithium plating on the right at room temperature. We can see that the results are quite consistent with the original study by Gu et al. The heat generation is clearly lower with the UVP than with CCCV, and the amount of plated lithium is also reduced dramatically. As a result, we would expect significant improvements in lifetime. But let's now have a look at the results at negative 10 degrees, which are, the, which are shown in the bottom two plots. Here the picture is quite different. We now see that the advantages of the UVP have disappeared. In fact, it now leads to a higher heat generation and more severe lithium plating than the standard CCCV. So the same protocol that greatly improved performance at room temperature would actually reduce the lifetime at sub-zero temperatures. The use of a physics-based model allows us to investigate the physical reasons for this behavior. We have found that the main issue with the UVP at low temperatures was a high peak current at moderate states of charge. Like I mentioned before, the high peak current was originally designed to take advantage of the low resistance and therefore low heat generation in this region, and does work very well at room temperature. The problem is that at sub-zero temperatures, the anode of the cell can no longer accommodate the same current. The lithium transport in the electrolyte becomes much slower and we are in fact consuming the ions at the current collector side of the anode faster than they can be replenished. As a result, the electrolyte salt becomes more and more depleted, which creates favorable conditions for plating. Based on this, we can conclude that for this energy dense cell at sub-zero temperatures, we need to either improve the electrolyte transport through material level solutions, or use a charging protocol with lower peak currents 
that does not deplete the electrolyte so severely. All these results are based on a one-dimensional model and give us some important insights on charging optimization in a thermally uniform cell. However, we do know that in real fast charging situations, lithium-ion batteries are usually not uniform. Not only do we have high heat generation from the cells themselves, but we also tend to cool the surfaces of some cells in the back quite aggressively. The combined effect is that thermal gradients develop across the individual cells, but there is still very little literature on how these gradients may affect the severity of lithium plating and therefore the fast charging capability. As part of our ongoing work, we are now using 2D and 3D models to study these effects as well. This is all from me today. To summarize, we have completed a detailed literature review on lithium ion battery fast charging with a focus on the multi-scale nature of the problem. Based on our modeling results, we concluded that charging protocols are not one size fits all and can in fact have very different effects on different cell types or in different environments. Uh, we also recognize that there is still a lack of understanding uh, of how cells and packs under realistic thermal conditions can be charged faster. And we are working towards addressing this problem. Thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to answer any questions.